Hi, welcome to another session of Circuits and Networks. In today's class, we are going to deal with some new methods involved with super node analysis, especially the problems which are involved with dependent as well as independent sources. So, one example you can see you have independent sources. 10 volts is the voltage shared between these two points. Then you can see 4 Vx, which is the voltage dependent current source, and that Vx is measured across pi ohms. So how do we solve this kind of problems using supernode technique? What is supernode circuit? Whenever a common voltage source is shared between two nodes or junctions, it forms a supernode circuit. Example, calculate the voltage across two ohms and current through four ohms using node analysis. So it is a supernode analysis problem because 10 volts is shared between this point as well as this point. So it's a super node circuit, not a simple node circuit, it's a super node circuit because 10 volts is shared between node 1 and node 3. So this nodes I'm identifying as V1, V2 and V3. So with this, 10 it is placed between 1 and minus it is placed at node 3. So we need to calculate voltage across 2 ohms and current in 4 ohms using node analysis. So first V1 minus V3 equal to 10, that is what it is obtained. This is one of kind of super node and frame the other parameters connected to node 1 and node 3 together. So that's why we are going to apply KCL to node 1 and node 3 together. Then we are going to get at this node 1 you can see uh, 2 amperes is without going, that's why positive 2 and you have V1 minus V2 by 2, this is another branch current. So we have to add the node 3 parameters also. So V3 minus V2 by 1, that is another branch current. And 3 amperes is coming towards node 3, that's for minus 3. So simplify this equation, we are going to get V1 by 2 minus V2 times 1 by 2 plus 1 plus V3 equal to 1. Substitute the values of this 1 by 2, 1 by 2 plus 1 and 1. In decimals, we are going to get as 0 0.5 V1 minus 1.V2 plus V3 equal to 1. So this I am reading as equation 2. Then what is the leftover? Leftover is the node 2. Here node 2, you can apply again the KCL. So you will be having V2 minus V1 by 2, one branch current. And V2 minus V3 by 1, this is another branch current. And you have V2 by 4, another branch current. So this is the equation. Simplify this equation and rename as equation 3. Solving equation 1, 2, 3, we are going to get V1, V2, V3 values as 11.33 volts, 4 volts and 1.33 volts respectively. So have we done with the problem? No, because we need to calculate the voltage across 2 ohms and current in 4 ohms. These are only the node voltages which we have obtained using super node analysis. So once we are done with the node voltages, the voltage across 2 ohms it should be obtained as V1 minus V2 which is equal to 11.33 minus 4. So this will give you a, the value as 7.33 volts. Since the arrow mark is in this direction that's why it is V1 minus V2. Is this clear? Then current in 4 ohms which is in this direction. So V2 by 4 will be giving you the value as 1 ampere. So this is how you solve the problem using node analysis especially the problem which are involved with super nodes that is 10 volts when it is shared between node 1 and node 3. Whatever we have done, whether it is right or wrong, we can check with mesh analysis also. So I am solving the same circuit using mesh analysis. One, what we need to know, we need to know the value of voltage across 2 ohms and current in 4 ohms. So I will be taking the loop current directions I1, I2, I3 as clockwise. You can have your own directions of loop currents. Fortunately, I1 it is equal to minus 2 amperes. You can see the direction of loop current I1 as well as the source current 2 amperes which are acting opposite. Similarly, you can see I2 it is equal to minus 3 amperes. Okay, so what we are done with loop 1 and loop 2, just apply KVL to loop 3. So I am going to start with 2, 2 I3 minus I1 plus 10 plus 1 I3 minus I2 equal to 0. Substitute the values of I1 and I2. So you have minus 2i1 minus i2 plus 3i3 equal to minus 10, which will be equivalent to 
is minus 2 times of minus 2. This is I1 value is minus 2. Then you have minus and I2 you have minus 3 plus 3 I3 is equal to minus 10. So this becomes 4 and 3 it becomes plus 7. It goes on the next side it becomes minus 17 by 3 amperes which is equal to minus 5.667 amperes. So what we need to know the value of voltage across flow ohms which is nothing but Ohm's law gives the value as 2 times of the difference in the current. So 2 times I1 we know that the value is minus 2 minus just now we got the value of I3 which is equal to minus 5.667. So substitute the value we are going to get the value as 7.33 volts. I hope this technique is clear. Then current in 4 ohms nothing but the current which is flowing in 4 ohms the branch current is difference of loop currents I1 and I2. So I1 minus I2. So I1 you have minus 2 minus times of the I2 value is again minus 3 which will give the value as 1 ampere. So whether you employ mesh analysis to the super node circuit you are going to get the same values in terms of magnitude when it you are going to measure across branches or through the parameters which are asked. Let us go with the next example. Find the value of current in 4 ohms. Here we need to calculate the value of current. So again, is it a supernova problem? Yes, it's a supernova problem because you can see six volts is shared between this point and this point, and there is no other parameter between this node and this node other than six volts. So it becomes a supernova. So identifying the supernova values V1, V2, V3, and first V2 minus V3 equal to six volts. This is clear why? Because positive is connected to V2. Negative is connected to V3. That's why V2 minus V3 equal to 6 volts. So this is done. Now take the other parameters which are connected to node 2, node 3 together. So you have V2 minus V1 by 2. This is one branch current. Then you have V2 by 4. This is another branch current. Then you have V3 over here. So V3 minus V1 by 4. This is one branch current. And V3 divided by 1 0.5 plus 2.5 meter because these are in series. So simplifying this circuit, I'm going to get minus 3v1 plus 3v2 plus 2v3 equal to 0. So it's a simple simplification. You take a proper LCM, you're going to get this value. Then applying KCL to node 1 because we are done with super node, both equations, equation 1 and equation 2, and the leftover is this node. That's why we are applying KCL at the node 1. So we'll be having V1 minus V2 by 2, this is one branch current. Then you have V1 minus 12 by 3, another branch current, that is this branch current. And then you have V1 minus V3 by 4. So simplifying this equation, I am going to get 13 V1 minus 6 V2 minus 3 V3 equal to 48. Just simplify equations 1, 2, 3, I am going to get the value of V1 which is equal to 6.7894 volts. V2 is equal to 6.47368 volts. And V3 is equal to 0 0.4736 volts. So after solving the values for V1, V2, V3, we need to obtain the current which is flowing in 4 ohms. So I4 is equal to V2 by 4. So this value will be nothing but V2 divided by 4, which will be nothing but 1.61842 amperes. You can Check the same result using mesh analysis, the technique which I have employed in the first example. Same technique you can apply for mesh analysis. Comment, please comment in the chat box whether you got the same result using mesh analysis or not. This I am giving you as a kind of homework. Please cross check the result and let me know whether you got the same answer in the chat box. Okay. So quickly let us go to the example which is involved with dependent sources. So here you can see we have to find out Vx. Vx using node analysis so simply becomes a super node analysis. Why super node? Because Vx positive is on this side, Vx negative is on this side and V1 it is measured across 4 ohms, V2 is measured across 6 ohms. So simply this becomes a super node as V1 minus V2 equal to Vx. Is this clear? V1 minus V2 equal to Vx. Is this clear? The, the, that is an important technique over here. So V1 minus V2 is equal to Vx. So this is what it is the main solution for this particular circuit. 
let us solve it. The uh, mm, actual approach that is supernode analysis. I am taking KCL to node 1. So, to this node 1, how many branches are connected? 7 amperes, 4 ohms, 5 ohms, 3 times V1. So, this is a voltage dependent current source whose dependency is again not at this particular node only. So the voltage across 4 ohms only. So, you have 7 amperes coming towards node 1. So, that's why it is minus 7 plus V1 by 4. Then you have V1 minus V2 by 5. And 3 V1, it is coming towards the node 1. That's why minus 3 V1 equal to 0. Simplifying this, I'm going to get the value as minus 2.55 V1 minus 0 0.2 V2 is equal to 7. This I'm reading as equation 1. Then applying case here to node 2. So you have V2 minus V1 by 5. 3V1 it is outgoing. V2 by 6 another branch current and 4VX it is also outgoing. So you can see V2 minus V1 by 5 this is one branch current. Then V2 by 6 is another branch current. 3V1 it is outgoing that's why it is positive 3V1 plus positive 4VX is equal to 0. And what is the cash point here? And the cash point is the super node which is Vx acting between node 1 and node 2. So V1 minus V2 is equal to Vx what we have carefully observed. Just substitute 3 in equation 2. We are going to get 6.8 V1 minus 3.633 V2 is equal to 0. Now just solve equation 1 and equation 4. We are going to get the value of V1 which is equal to minus 2.5. 393 volts and V2 is equal to minus 4.48 volts. What is the requirement? Requirement is Vx which is nothing but difference of voltage V1 and V2. To so substitute the value of V1 and V2, we are going to get the value of Vx which is equal to 2.087 volts. Again, please cross check the result using mesh analysis and please comment in the chat box whether you got the same result or not. So, let us go with the final example in today's session that is opening V2 using node analysis. So just we are applying node points V1, V2, V3 like we have employed for the previous problems. And what is a here catch point? It is a 0 0.8 V2 which is shared between node 1 and node 3. So V1 minus V3 is equal to 0 0.8 V2. Just reframing this equation equal to 0 and treating as equation 1. So once we are done with the supernode equation 1, collect the parameters which are connected to node 1 and node 3 at a time. So you have minus 5 amperes coming in towards the node 1. So minus 5 plus V1 minus V2 by 2 plus V3 divided by 2.5. This is the another branch current. Plus 8 amperes it is outgoing. At this node, 8 amperes it is outgoing. So simplifying this equation, we are going to get 0 0.5 V1 minus 0.5 V2 plus 0.4 V3 equal to minus 3 equation 2 and applying the KCL to node 2 which are going to get as V2 minus V1 by 2 plus V2 by 5 minus 8 equal to 0. Treat this one as equation 3 which is nothing but minus 0 0.5 V1 plus 0 0.7 V2 is equal to 8. So solving these equations we are going to get V1 is equal to 20.27 volts. V2 is equal to 25.909 volts and V3 is equal to minus 0.4545 volts. Now I sincerely request you please cross check the analysis using question analysis and please comment on the chat box whether you are getting the same answers or not. So in today's class we are done with supernode techniques especially the problems involved with dependent and dependent sources. So whenever you have independent sources then also you can solve the circuit using supernode analysis and cross check the result with mesh analysis. Similarly, whether you have dependent voltage or current sources, dependent current voltage sources, whatever the dependency is there, you can cross check the results using mesh analysis as well as node analysis. So, I hope you like my video. Please share among your friends, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon for the future notifications. Thank you.